Hey, so this is going to be just a long talky video. Um, I want to talk about something which is really fundamental to level design as a discipline, but is also kind of a bit of a elephant in the room that is kind of a weird thing to talk about in a way. And it's basically the fact that level design is quite weird as a discipline and weird in a way that makes it quite hard to learn, hard to practice, hard to show people, and therefore quite hard to get a job in, you know, to get your first entry level job in. I mean this in contrast to lots of other kind of creative endeavors and art forms and things, you know, things like drawing or writing, you know, to, to do either of those things, to do to get into drawing, you just need to buy um, a drawing pad and a pencil. And you can start drawing and you can draw whenever you like and you can draw whatever you like and practicing will make you good and you can show people that you're good if you're good. You know, you can show people what you've done and people can tell if it's good. Um, writing is the same thing. You know, you can, it's, it's hard. You know, none of these things are easy, but you, if you have a pen and paper or you have a word processor or a mobile phone, smartphone, you can write anything. You can write a screenplay on your phone and uh, it is basically all up to you and how much writing you do um, that decides your output. You know, you can write anything you like. It's just words in that sense. Things like uh, 3D art and um, animation. If you want to get into this stuff, you can get hold of software like animation or modeling software like uh, Blender or you can find ways to get hold of Maya and 3ds Max and stuff like this. If you can get hold of that software, then you can, again, you can model anything, you can animate anything, and you can do it on your own and practice and then show people what you've done. In contrast to all of these things, level design does not have universal level design software that you can use to make whatever you like. It's kind of the opposite. This is partly because you can't make levels in a vacuum. Level design is different for every game and it's very specific to every game. And it's also specific to what you can do with the tools that you have. And unfortunately, these tools aren't available because they're different for every game, right? So the thing is, I started making these levels to try and help people get into level design, understand the craft and help you with portfolio work and that kind of thing. And unfortunately, it can be hard for me to give the advice um, that I want to give. Uh, for example, you know, one of the main things that I think you need to do as a um, or aim to do as a level designer applying for jobs is to create fully playable levels, right? To me, this is because if you can't play your levels, then you have no idea if they're any good and you're not doing the actual nitty gritty work that level designers do. And you, it means you can't show it to other people and show them that you've done that kind of work. So that makes it harder for you to get jobs because the other person's trying to critique your work doesn't have much to go on if, if you can't see gameplay in action. Um, you know, so this is the number one thing. You've got to show that you've made playable, cool, interactive experiences. Um, and you've got to be able to show it to other people. So that's what I think is the important goal for you to aim for as an aspiring level designer. The thing is, is that, like I say, it's tricky for me to give that advice, knowing that it's difficult to do that these days because the tools aren't available for all of the kinds of games that people would like to make. So the point of this video for me is to talk about this and at least acknowledge it, just so people know that it's a thing. And for some context, I'm going to talk about how different things were when I got into level design years ago, decades ago. Um, because I, um, let me think, I'm 37 years old. I've been in the industry mostly as a level designer for about 14 years now. And I studied at Teesside University up in the north of England uh, for about three or four years before that. And I got into level design and making levels as a hobby um, way before that as well. You know, I actually, I started making levels for Doom 2, I think it was, um, back when I was, I think, about 11 years old, which is quite weird. <laughs> I got into making levels for Doom when my brother randomly, I think, uh, found a level editor for Doom called Doomcad. Uh, he, he found it on this new thing called the internet. And uh, it just blew me away that I could make levels and I kind of got into it. And uh, yeah, then after that, you know, uh, made Doom levels, uh, Quake came out, that had level editors available for it. I made a few single player maps and a, a deathmatch map or two for that. Um, and then Half-Life 2 came out and that was a really big deal for me. Episode 1 and 2 were just right up my street. And when I was at university doing my final project, um, I was like 
that's what I want to do. I want I want to work on this kind of game in the industry. And fortunately for me, you know, like I say, that came with an editor, the editor that Valve used to make the game. And so I could make stuff that is potentially just as good as the real game, um, which is the ideal position to be in as a level designer. So that period of time that I've just talked about, that happens to be exactly when I got into level design from the days of Doom 2 when I was a little kid and uh, Half-Life 2 and the episodes when I was graduating from university. It just so happens in my favor that this, in, I've realized now, is, was kind of a, a golden age of level design in the sense that, or for first-person shooters specifically, it was a golden age in the sense that all of my favorite, the kind of biggest, coolest games, if you were into shooters during these times, um, they all had level editors, like legit level editors that were like what the developers used that enable you to do everything in the game that the developers could. That was a great time to get into level design. And, uh, you know, that, that's the reason why there's a lot of designers in the industry around my age or a bit older who, who became level designers during this time. You know, Doom kicked off a revolution in level design. So in this sense, I was very lucky and it kind of really enabled me as a level designer. Another thing, though, is that when I was at university, I, I also considered myself as a game designer. You know, I had a very keen mind for game design. I liked the idea of, uh, you know, thinking about all the systems and all, everything about the game, basically. Um, the reason I focused on level design was because I realized somewhere in the middle of my university course that um, it it was way easier for me to show that I was uh, a level designer, that I can do this stuff, than it was for me to show that I can do game design, right? Uh, you got to bear in mind, this was, you know, like I say, let's say 15 years ago now, when Unity wasn't a thing, Unreal was a thing, but not freely available and not, nothing like it is now. The idea of the indie game scene wasn't much of a thing, and people barely used that term. Um, it was, it was just on the horizon, but it wasn't really happening yet. I think I would have been a great game designer coming out of university, but I didn't know how to show it to people. I didn't know how to make games on my own and say, hey, I'm a game designer. And so I focused on level design for that reason. Um, and obviously, I'd, I'd been doing it for a long time. But like, uh, yeah, the tools were there for me to show that I could do level design and, and apply for jobs with. And I got jobs straight out of university as a result. Cut to today, weirdly, it is the complete opposite. It's completely backwards to that now. Um, now, game design is a thing that everybody goes to university for. And Unity and Unreal are freely available for universities to teach designers how to program and allow small groups of students to create whole games together. And it's kind of the normal thing now, relatively speaking. And on the flip side, level design is now more niche and specific and uh, kind of obscure in a way. Every designer now, by default, gravitates towards game design and making entire games. Um, and level designers, people who do get into the idea of being a level designer, maybe because they play games with cool level design in, um, they are in a position where they don't know what to do. So level designers today are in a much harder position because in contrast to the golden age that I talked about, where all the coolest shooters, at least, had level editors that enabled you to make your own levels, um, you know, modern games rarely, if ever, have level editors with them, you know. Um, in the indie space, you occasionally get games where, with, with level editors in them, but it's very specific to certain games and just a handful of small games. In the AAA space, it's way less common now because basically the, the scope and the complexity of AAA games is such that um, making levels is no longer a solo effort like it could be in the old school days. And the artwork and the fidelity of the graphics and stuff is just through the roof. And so it's really rare for AAA games to have level editors. You know, sometimes you get streamlined versions of editors made for kind of players like uh, the new Doom games and um, Far Cry 5 apparently has quite a cool streamlined editor for people to use. But they're not the same tools that the developers use to make the games because preparing those tools for public use, it would just be such a significant amount of work for a relatively niche audience. I don't think it adds up anymore in terms of being worth the work, frankly. And I think that's why it doesn't happen. So without these tools, it's hard for today's aspiring level designers to make fully playable levels, which is the main thing that I try to recommend that people try to do. What is typical now is that people gravitate towards Unity and Unreal 
as the kind of you know de facto game development engines to learn these days. And level des- aspiring level designers try to make levels using these tools. Uh, and the challenge there is that Unreal and Unity are not level editors; they're game engines. And in contrast to what I said before, where you know the ideal position as a level designer is you using a level editor for an existing game where you have all of the game's content and systems and stuff at your disposal. In contrast to that ideal position, Unreal and Unity start you with nothing because there are game engines made for people who want to make entire games. And so if you're a solo aspiring level designer and you want to make levels and you use Unreal or Unity, you've kind of, to make a fully playable level, which is what I think every, every level designer should be doing, or aspiring to, you kind of have to make your own fully playable game before you can make fully playable levels for the game, which is insane, right? I don't recommend you try to do that because it's, it's too much work and it's too much of a distraction from level design. So if today's aspiring level designers can't make fully playable levels using editors for existing games, what do they do? The new thing seems to be making blockouts. And this is largely inspired by the Blocktober hashtag, which is this cool thing uh, started by some designers at Naughty Dog. And uh, it was created to kind of celebrate level design and and bring visibility to the discipline, I think, um, to show people and encourage people to show what level designers do. And uh, in the form, this is usually done in the form of blockouts. And now blockouts is, is a big term that everybody constantly talks about. Now, here's where I want to get a bit... Uh, it might sound like a bit ranty, but it's it, it's really well intentioned. Um, but I I have mixed feelings about a lot of what I see on Blocktober. Uh, I understand why people are doing it, and it's cool that it's happening in general. But um, again, through the lens of what I keep talking about, with the idea, the goal of the the focus on level design is creating playable levels. Like this, this is just absolutely what level design is about to me. I have these mixed feelings about a lot of what I see posted to Blocktober because I feel like 90% of it is uh, static screenshots of empty, very unplayable looking environments. And to me, in my very personal opinion, through the lens of what I'm talking about, there is not much level design there. It's not really, you can kind of imagine when you look at these empty environments made of boxes, you can kind of imagine games taking place in them. But when that isn't there, and you have to do all the imagining of a game in there, you're not showing off level design, you know, you, you're, because the level design is in the content that you put in the environments. And the experience that happens as a result of the very specific ways you've designed that content, you know, the way you've crafted an experience. And so I, hmm, how to put this, like, and so while I think, I don't want to sound like a dick. <laughs> um, I'm very conscious of the whole gatekeeping thing here. That's what I'm hesitating about. I don't want to sound like someone who's saying like, this isn't real level design. Everybody should do everything like I do. Um, I'm saying this because, like I say, the whole point of this video is to acknowledge that things are hard for today's generation of level designers because of the lack of tools. So I'm talking about this very specifically in terms of people trying to create portfolio work to apply for jobs with. I suppose what I would recommend and ask for is that more people show gameplay videos. If your levels are playable, when you show people your levels, show them videos of you playing the level or somebody playing the level. Uh, to me, like showing, again, even aside from the empty environments thing and, the, and whether or not the level is actually playable, level design does not show very well in screenshots right? Um, It's like if you were an animator, it would be like trying to show your animation off in a still image, like a still image of a character in a pose, you know? Um, The work is in the animation, the the craft and the the creative decisions are in how things move (laughs) as an animator. You know, this is kind of obvious in the context of animation, but to me, it's equally uh, true of level design. Level design is about an interactive experience and crafting a a thing that you play. Um, And so if you can't play it, and if you can't even see it in motion when you show it to people, then you're not showing the level design, I don't think. And if you've made a block out and it looks like something like a level, 
but you can't play it and there's no interactive content in there, then arguably you've kind of just made some unfinished environment art. You know, it's it's just a visual thing. It's there's maybe a sense of place, but there's not an interactive experience. So yeah, I'm really not saying this to have a go at anyone. That's not my intention. Uh, like I say, this video is about acknowledging that it's difficult these days. Um, I don't know how to solve this problem. Uh, I don't even know how the industry could magically solve this problem because like I say, it's hard because it's about the availability of tools and the tools are necessarily different for every game. I suppose I just thought it might be worth saying this in case people out there it would be useful for them to hear it. You know, for example, if you're somebody who is wanting to get into level design, but you don't know how, and it seems really kind of like a brick wall, like there's nothing there for you to latch onto. Um, you know, I, I can really relate to that feeling because I had that as a wannabe game designer, I had that feeling with programming for years and I'm still not much of a programmer. Like Unity helped me get into it finally. But as I said, back at university, I wanted to be a game designer and make games. I had no idea how to do it. I had no idea how to learn programming. And, um, you know, so I can, I can relate to that feeling of like, I want to do this, but I don't know how to get into it. And I just want to acknowledge for people that it's, it's level design being weird that makes this hard. Similarly, if you're applying for jobs and, you know, your first level design jobs and you're struggling with it and it's not really working out, maybe you're wondering why that's the case. I've seen a lot of student level design portfolios and I've done a bit of hiring and the problem I see is that this lack of fully playable levels, you know, not being able to see as a potential employer what this person has done to craft an awesome experience. So I know this must be something that people are struggling with. If you have any questions or thoughts on this, I'd, I'd love to hear it. You know, feel free to post some comments. Um, and maybe particularly if you have recently applied for level design jobs, your first level design jobs and got the job. I'd be really interested in seeing what you had or hearing about what you had to show to convince them to give you the job. You know, what levels were you able to make and what did you, you know, what did you do to, to make it happen? Um, because that's the question, right? Okay, so I know that this is mostly just pointing at a problem and not being able to fix it, but um, I hope this was useful for somebody somewhere, somehow. Cheers for watching. See ya.